everyone and welcome back to Taito Ecology and today we are diving into our two biomes and I'm kind of in the mood to throw in some bigger predators. So I'm a little bit excited to see what is going to go down especially in Fernville where those predators are going to be a little bit bigger and more exotic and also in Not Kansas where in our grasslands we are going to hopefully enjoy adding in some adorable garter snakes. So first thing we need to do though is jump in and see if everything's actually alive or not and that's always uh, a little bit of a concern. It has not been very long uh, because I forgot to turn everything on when we were last in Fernville. So let's go ahead and see how things have been going. We did spend a little bit of time. Oh, what's going on? A group of moths? Now this is interesting. Who the heck is eating the moths? Like which group of moths? I really wish it'd be more specific. Not this group. You know what? Let's figure this out because somebody is eating a lot of the insects. Okay, so this is a group of moths that has a lower population than normal. So yeah, I kind of feel like we need to kind of scout around and figure out where the insects are being eaten. Okay, this group of moths is being preyed on. Is it the frogs? Are they the ones doing it? Because, I mean, it's fine if we have some predation going on on the insects. I'm just curious about who's doing it. Because it should be like maybe the armadillos or the frogs. Okay, these frogs are doing okay. Average hunger. Maybe I need more more ants over here? I probably need more ants over here. There's there's some ants over here, but I think they're just... Oh, look at that. They're right outside of the frog's territory. All right. Well, we'll go ahead and add in some ants over there so that our little froggies can eat it. Uh, where'd the ants go? Marsh deer, jaguar. And yeah, I'm kind of in the mood to see if we can get up to the point of supporting jaguar populations. And to do that, I think we need a couple of the large herbivores. So we're gonna open up the marsh deer and the collared peccaries, and we'll start adding those guys in in just a moment. Where on earth did my ants go? I know they're somewhere in here, where the heck? Oh, there they are. <laughs> I was just passing them up again and again, it seems. All right, we'll put some ants over here. And then I'm going to add some ants over here. And I'm really curious actually who's eating all of them. I think it's probably the frogs. So I'm going to add in another population of frogs over here. And some blue morphos over here. And then we're going to see what that does. Because we do need to try to balance out some of the predators. And if we're going to have the big herbivores and we're going to have the big predators, we might need a little bit more room. Alright, our ocelots are doing pretty well. They have been continuing to eat. They have been continuing to basically destroy a lot of the populations of these smaller... Like, look at these guys! They're about to lose those guys again! I'm just not sure, like, what it is going to take to try to keep some of these species, like this armadillo group, up really high. I mean, how many... You just have to add in so, so, so many of the prey items for one predator group to have enough food without overeating some of the other territories. So, and the group of ants has low population. What? I want to know where. Like, who? Who is eating my ants? Over here? Is it? Oh! Maybe it's because we have, like, one, two frogs. So, maybe that's it. All right. Well, maybe these frogs need a little bit more to do. So, I'll put down some moths over here. And then, let's start building up with some more of the big guys. So, maybe another strangler fig over here. Um, maybe one of the really big ones, the, uh, oh, I can never, kapok trees, kapok trees, let's add in another one of these guys over here, I guess he's just kind of decorative, maybe another strangler fig back here, maybe a lot of strangler figs, because we are about to try to add in some big, big, big herbivores, in fact, I wonder if we should actually expand before we do this, that might be a good idea. I don't think that this is a big enough biome to represent like the territory space that something like a jaguar would actually need. So, hmm, let's go ahead and buy the new the new spot. All right, zone three, and let's confirm. There we go. <gasps> Look at it! It's so awesome! It's so awesome and big. Okay, hopefully we'll be able to add more things in over here too. All right, so maybe maybe another big giant kapok tree, and. Uh, Where'd you go? Oops, oh, I keep clicking cancel. I was like, what the heck? All right, let's put him on top of this hill, actually, because that looks kind of majestically amazing. And then maybe some of the palms over here. And little papayas and pineapple. Oh, out of energy. Drink. It's really fun to get multiple biomes up, actually. Today, depending on what we do, I always say, we'll add in more things, but then we get distracted. 
But yeah, depending on what we end up doing today, we might start on the uh, desert biome because it's fun to have them all going in the background and then to check in on them, isn't it? And I'm so excited to hear how many of you guys, yay, weekly income. I'm so excited to hear how many of you guys are like, yeah, I, I had to get this game. I'm loving it so much. And I would love to hear what you've like named your biomes, what you specialize in things that you really enjoy and a lot of it is it's not just like trying to do really well in the game it's also just about enjoying the experience like here's the little wall of orchids that we're going to have at the base of this tree that sounds amazing to me and let's like tuck a little thing of earthworms that can snuggle up in the roots right there get some mushroom action going on we're going to need lots and lots of mushrooms because they're going to be needed to go ahead and remove all of the extra poop and as the leaves die, they're going to need to be removing those. There we go. We can add in some moths right up here. Maybe some blue morphos down here. Now we've got lots and lots of insects. So why not add in some frogs who can come over and kind of like enjoy this spot? Yeah, but we'd have some frogs who'd be really happy right there. Ah, ants and agotis, low population. I don't know what to do about that right now, though. So, oh, maybe we can add in some agotis over here. All right, they would probably be happy over there too. So yeah, we're starting to spread things out a little bit more. Who's this? Oh, it's a mushroom. These guys are doing pretty good. Do you need some more? Some more? Do do do. Flame fruit. Maybe maybe another pineapple set. <gasps> it's a baby frog! You guys, look at him! Oh my gosh, baby frogs! Baby frogs! <laughs> They're so cute! Oh, our frog population is doing well then. No wonder we're running low on ants. Oh, multiple groups of ants. It's, it's, I don't think, oh, did they just go extinct? Oh my goodness! All right, those ants just went out. All right, well, I guess we need more, like, moths, I suppose, and more ants um, over here. Like, really, did that group of ants? Yeah, look at that! The frogs just ate that entire group of ants. Look at him! How many ants could you fit in there? You're so tiny. You're so teeny tiny. He's so cute. And he's sleeping next to a mushroom. That's adorable. I've got to save that. All right. I still can't find where those pictures are, by the way. So if you guys like have the actual path of like how to find those pictures, please let me know. Because I have no idea where they're disappearing to. All right. And let's go ahead and add in another palm tree. Maybe uh, we definitely need to put in more ants now. Otherwise, I might lose those populations of frogs. And they're very, very cute. All right, where's my ants? There's my ants. All right, we'll buy more. And yeah, then let's start trying out, testing out what it is like to put in some of the large herbivores now that we've made a bigger area. So let's start with the marsh deer. I'm a little nervous about this because I'm not sure how the marsh deer population will do. But let's go ahead and just put him right in here. All right. Hello, lovely. You guys are just going to fall from the sky for a minute. Wow, you guys are pretty. Oh, look, there's all the babies. All these katamandis. Okay, I think we might be able to support a jaguar population after all. We've got quite a few of these guys. We've got a lot of marsh deer running by. So it might be okay. Wow, you start off with a lot of marsh deer. I really hope I can feed all these guys enough. So let's look at what they need. They're herbivores who eat mostly leaves and roots. Uh, large predators like big cats will prey on marsh deer. Baby deer are particularly vulnerable to predators. While many deer have spots when they are babies, marsh deer look like miniature versions of their parents. Their solid colored reddish coats help them blend in with the muddy areas near water sources. Ooh, good to know. They are most commonly found in rainforest or swampy areas. They live in the Amazonian Peru in, in Amazonian Peru and Brazil, with some populations occurring as far south as northern Argentina. Now that is really cool. Okay. They are drawn to habitats with lots of still water and dense leaf cover. Though they have small pointy hooves, a web of skin between their toes keeps them from sinking in muddy areas. So they have their own little built-in mud boots. That is awesome. Okay. All right, not particularly aggressive towards each other. Females will almost always have just one fawn after mating and may be pregnant for almost a year. Wow, that's a long time to carry around a baby. So I don't think we'll have very quick reproduction turnover on these marsh deer. So it might be a good idea to get more populations of them in. Uh, they are popular hunting targets for humans. They also prefer undisturbed, heavily forested areas, which means that human activity can be devastating. Marsh deer have been known to catch diseases from cattle farms, which has led to their dramatically or drastic... Yeah, dramatically shrunken numbers. 
Uh, they are important prey items for many predators, so most do not live very long in the wild. Marsh deer may live for 20 years, though they are usually picked off by disease or other animals long before then. All right, most active in the evening and dawn, though they can be seen during the daytime. Oh dear, we'll have to learn more in just a second. Oh no! But which group of frogs? Which group of frogs has a low population? Is it, the, is it these guys? Are these guys like being preyed on again? How are my ocelots doing? Still have those two juveniles? I still don't know what happens after you have a juvenile like grow up. So we'll have to see. All right, well, we've got the marsh deer added in. I'm actually pretty happy with how much stuff we have on this side of the river. We might need to start adding in stuff over here. This is gonna be their territory too. And we're constantly adding in some more pineapple whenever we have like a stray moment. But I said we were going to add in one of the larger predators, and I kind of want to do that. I kind of want to add in another marsh deer population, maybe over here. So, I don't know. We'll try this out. We're doing a big experiment. And then maybe even another marsh deer population back here. And we'll have to see if we've created enough of that pyramid where we have a good heavy bottom of support for all of the apex predators going on up. And then let's try some of the collared peccaries too. So let's see what these guys will eat. So we're adding in a lot of animals. I'm not sure if we're going to be able to support this much. This is majorly a big experiment. All right, so we have the collared peccaries. Hello, little ones. All right, and let's see what they need. They are generally herbivores and are even capable of eating tough, spiny plants like agave that other animals won't touch. They may also eat very small animals like snakes, bird eggs, and carrion. Large predators will eat peccaries. Babies are especially vulnerable. In the wild, baby peccaries look very different from adults. While adults are grayish brown with a white collar around their neck, babies are more orange or yellow in color with a dark stripe down their back. This helps babies blend in and avoid pred predators during their most vulnerable years. Well, good luck, little ones. Welcome to the world. How's my tapir doing? A little bit hungry. Might need to add in more food for it. We might have, we might have, woo, there's our weekly income. We might be overdoing it a little bit with some of the herbivores, but that's where we're gonna bring in a little bit of balance. Uh, a little bit of balance, you guys, by adding in one of the large carnivores now. So let me go ahead and put down some more pineapples. Desperately trying to feed them. All right, maybe one more pineapples. There we go. So yeah, lots and lots of food. Man, look how complex this area has gotten. I love it. And we have lots of marsh deer. So I think maybe from right here, kind of like the epicenter, because this is zone two. Yeah, I think maybe from right over here is where we're going to add in the jaguar. And I'm not sure, and we'll go ahead and buy the cougar as well. I'm not sure if we can actually support the jaguar population. This may be a terrible idea. This may, oh, all the animals of the rainforest unlocked. Woo! This may not end well, but we're just gonna have to put them down and we're just gonna have to see. So jaguar, lots and lots of creatures, including the ocelots. Now that might be interesting. Let's try scooching it maybe a little more over here. Interesting, that actually puts more prey items in its category and there we go. <gasps> Look at your beautiful things. Oh my gosh. Welcome. Welcome, you beautiful jaguar, you. I hope you are going to enjoy our rainforest biome. I hope you find plenty of food. I hope it is adequate for you. Wow, they start moving, like, really quickly. I may have just unleashed... Oh my gosh, why is there so much death? There's a lot of death. There's, like, a trail of death right here. Oh my gosh, it really is a trail of death. What is going on? Who were these? Who were these tiny things? Why were they eaten? It's the Cotamandis. There are a whole bunch of dead baby Cotamandis, I think. All right, are you coming over here to eat this? Because this is still food, yeah? Oh my goodness, we're gonna have to see you guys. They are fierce predators. They are carnivores who eat nothing but meat. There is virtually no animal a jaguar won't eat. Their strong jaws can even pierce tortoise skulls and crocodile skin. And that's true. I've actually seen a bunch of like the uh, caiman that are down in South America and the jaguars. You can see some documentaries where a jaguar will be eating a caiman. And it's kind of like, really? You're going for like this giant prickly thing? But it was really amazing to realize just how strong they are that they will take on like crocodiles, caiman, 
uh, you know, you, you look at something like an alligator with that tough, scaly skin, and you don't think anybody's going to look at that and go, I want to try to eat this, but the jaguar will do it. They're built for strength, not speed. Though they can run very quickly for short distances, they usually lie in wait for their prey, then leap out to, of hiding to take them by surprise. The jaguar usually kills its prey by biting the back of the neck or skull, instantly killing it. Even crocodiles are no match for a jaguar if they aren't expecting an attack. All right, yep. All right, so we have a new apex predator in here. And we've got a lot of deer roaming around. I don't know if we have enough plants to support everybody, but hopefully um, we'll just have to see how things go. Yep, and we've got our little ocelots. We've got our armadillos. We have this tapir. Are you still stuck in this bush? That was like days ago I left you here. This is a tapir that I think maybe one of the jaguars needs to come and locate because um, I don't think he should be long for this world. All right, so let's just step back and we're going to have to kind of take our hands off for a little while and see how this mix mash of all sorts of animals, all sorts of plants sort of comes together. And then we will try to continue to add in more plants. Like I need to add in a couple plants over here before we leave because this is just going to bug me because it's so empty. It's so empty and these guys need food. There we go. There we go. See, now we've got some stuff over here. Maybe add in some little earthworms. There. And then I, I think we're going to add in more capybara over here. <laughs> Maybe they'll have a chance to survive if they stay on this side. Go, little capybara, go. And then we'll just have to see how the populations play out. So this is interesting. Go, Fernville, go. Go, Fernville, go. All right. And now let's go ahead and pop over to Not Kansas and see how Not Kansas has been without our attention. And okay, it's only been like four days. I had this one on ultra slow because I was a little nervous about it. Oh, dear. All right. And let's see what's going on. All right, group of jackrabbits and prairie dog have low populations. So we added in a few more prey animals. Yeah, there's 11, 11 prairie dogs over here now. And then we added in a couple more groups of jackrabbits. And then here's another prairie dog population. We added in some frogs, more jackrabbits. So yeah, we're going to have to add in, I think, even more jackrabbits and the lower level the lower level herbivores that are going to get nommed up by our red foxes because our red foxes are still doing their best to kind of settle in. And let's see, they still have like 292 days before they're going to reproduce. So there's plenty of time. Oh, you really can't see when you're this up high in the grasslands area. So let's come down here. Who's this? Oh, it's mushrooms. And let's go ahead and add in like more buffalo grass and the blue grass. The blue grass is probably my favorite because it's so pretty. And then maybe some of the bushes and the milk thatches. But we definitely want mostly the grasses, I think, for the little creatures that eat the grasses. And then we'll add in more jackrabbits over here too. And I really want to add in the snake. So this is kind of still in the early stages when we're fiddling about just adding in the base plants for that bottom of the big, beautiful pyramid of predation like we keep talking about. It's kind of like its own little fuchin. All right, where can I stick you, pretty thing? There we go. Uh, we already have an eastern cottonwood. It's huge. Let's see. Maybe some of the switchgrass. Can I sneak in switchgrass over here? I wish I could. I just want to like pile the grass everywhere like I can in Zoo Tycoon 2 and put plants all over the place. All right. We probably need some of the little insects over here though. Can I put in another sneak bush over here? No, no. Oh, wait. Ooh, ooh, ooh. Ah, there we go. All right. Maybe some flowers like you. Do you want to go down here? Oh, you'll go over here. Beautiful cone flowers. Ah, and then you know what we need with all of these plants and all of these flowers and all of these grasses? Not only do we need the adorable garter snakes in just a second, but we need some bees. And honeybees are actually something you can add in. So let's go ahead and get some energy. And let's put down some honeybees. Yeah, that'll be awesome. How does the honeybee work? <gasps> Look at it! It has its own cool little like hive. That is so neat. Multiple groups of earthworms. What are eating my earthworms? <laughs> I didn't see that coming. Is that like the, the prairie dogs? Interesting. So here are the honeybees. They collect nectar from flowers, then refine and store it in their beehives as honey. Honey sustains all bees in the colony. Honeybees have stingers, which means that most animals avoid eating them as a snack. Some birds, however, have learned to eat around the, the bee's stingers, and animals like badgers will eat bee larvae. And they're often farmed for, by humans for their honey, as we, we know. All right, good. And they, they, they're all over the place, and there's thousands of kinds. And they're very, very, very important. <gasps> Deer mouse! I didn't even know we had deer mouse! Oh my goodness, this is so exciting. But I can't believe somebody is eating all of my 
<laughs> All of my earthworms. I guess I need to add in many, many more earthworms. That's not something I anticipated. I love how each each area is so different. All right, earthworms, earthworms. Don't mess with my earthworms, please. All right, wow, the foxes have a big territory range. And he's getting a little bit hungry. Can't really blame him. Doesn't look like there's a lot to eat over on this side. All right, let's get more switchgrass down really quickly. There we go. Oh, goodness. A group of earthworms has low population. How did that even happen? All right, and then we'll get some mice placed in because actually the mice, as we were learning about last time with the foxes, make for excellent prey items. So we probably need lots and lots and lots and lots of mice. They must be like the little goatees of the tropical zone where you need to have tons of them around if you're going to make sure that everybody is fed. I have no idea where that heather went. Down there. There we go. To make sure that everybody is fed enough. All right. Can I sneak a bush in somewhere over here? There we go. Sneak a little sage bush in. And then what about the western sand cherry? That sounds pretty. All right. Let's see. Oh, and actually there's the eastern red cider. Cedar. Why did I say cider? <laughs> I must want a drink or something. A nice little cider drink. Uh, we'll go ahead and put like a couple of them over here. Because as I mentioned before... You will end up with like little clusters of trees in the grasslands, even when it's mostly like these big open areas. All right, and then we'll put down some of the sand cherries kind of mixed in. Apparently everybody is eating, and we'll put down some honeybees over here too. Apparently everybody is eating my earthworms. I did not see that coming. That sort of majorly amuses me. Um, and I'll just have to keep like putting down lots of earthworms. All right, and there we go. All right, and I really wanted to add snakes in this time. So even though I'm still a little dubious about what we need to continue adding, let's grab those mice and let's put down a few, where'd they go? The deer mouse. Let's put down a few deer mouse here and there. So some over here. We'll put some over here. Put some down here. Probably need to have lots and lots and lots of them. They're the perfect small prey item. Hopefully they will sort of balance out some of the fox's appetite. And we can end up... There we go. There you go, little guys. And maybe some over here. And let's see how many we have. Hi, little ones! Oh my goodness, they're so cute! There's just pile of little mices! Piles of mice! Oh my gosh! <laughs> Look at how many mice! All right, well, we've got lots and lots of mice. Now we need to make sure that they are well fed. Um, and they're going to be eating fruits, nuts, leaves, and other greenery, as well as small insects. So probably need to get in some more of those. Do, 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 where'd they go? My ants. Where's my ants? There's my ants. Probably need to get in and maybe a few more ant populations, since apparently the insects are a major food source for a lot of the creatures here. And then finally, let's add in a little garter snake. And you can go right over here. All right, let's see how he is. <gasps> so cute! So cute! Garter snake in my grass. Oh, yeah. Look at that. Look at my garter snakes. They're adorable, and I love them. And this is getting really, really, really fun. I love this. It's so pretty in its own different way. And apparently, earthworms are being eaten all over the place. So who's eating all my earthworms? So next time we're gonna have to figure out here. It's I think it's the the, the the frogs, huh? So yeah, we'll have to figure out how to balance that out and we'll have to see if we can continue to grow our little not Kansas biome and maybe we'll even be able to work our way towards the desert biome soon too. So this is really fun. All right, you guys. Well, here's a not Kansas for the day and we'll have to come back next time. Cross our fingers. We'll leave it on hard as usual and we'll come back in about three months and see if anybody has survived. So I'll see you guys then. Bye-bye.